This is the 32nd video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. As we are now at the stage where our NAS has been configured for use on our local network, and we have installed and configured all of the basic applications and services that we wish to use, the next stage of our setup is to try and make our NAS as secure as possible which in turn will help to protect any data that it stores. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a number of different security settings, some which were enabled by default and others that we think you need to consider enabling. First, let's log into the Station Manager using our administrator's credentials. Now from within the DSM's desktop, we need to select Control Panel and then under File Sharing, locate and select User. When we set up our Synology NAS, we created a new System Administrators account and then disabled the default admin account. The reason that we did this was to create a simple way to add another layer that a hacker will have to break through in order to gain access to our system. It's also best practice to set your administrator's account with a really strong password. Ideally, the password should be over 10 characters in length and include both upper and lowercase letters along with numbers and at least one special character. As we intend to eventually make our NAS remotely accessible via the internet, it is also best practice to ensure that the guest user account has been disabled. The guest user account is designed to allow anyone to anonymously access our NAS. However, by leaving this account enabled, we could potentially allow anyone to access services that we may have inadvertently left open. If we now select the Advanced tab, under Password Settings, we next need to ensure that we've enabled the option Apply Password Strength Rules. This group of settings will dictate what type of passwords the users of our NAS can use. As a bare minimum, we recommend that the users of your NAS have a minimum password length of at least 8 characters. However, 10 or more characters would be safer. The next option that we'll take a look at is password expiration. By default, our NAS has not enabled password expiration. And because we are setting up our NAS to be used in a home network, we have decided not to enable this feature. However, if we take a quick look at password expiration, you can see that we have an option that will allow us to force our users to change their passwords after a specific number of days. By not enabling this feature, the user accounts on our NAS will be easier to hack. However, we have made a conscious decision to lower the levels of our security in an attempt to remove the frustrations caused to our users from having to regularly change their user passwords. This means that it's really important that we enable all of the password strength rules to ensure that our users can't use passwords that are easy to work out. Let's now use the sidebar and select Security. Under the Security tab, in general, we have an option that allows us to monitor the amount of inactivity within Distation Manager before we're automatically logged out. The default is 15 minutes. Enhanced browser compatibility by skipping IP checking is really designed for browsers behind a proxy server. However, as proxy servers are not usually used in a home network environment, we will be leaving this option disabled. Both of the options improve protection against cross-site request forgery attacks and improve security with HTTP Content Security Policy Header are two settings designed to protect our NAS from cross-site scripting attacks. As cross-site scripting covers a wide variety of web browser attacks, specifically designed to either capture a user's data or perform activities without a user's knowledge, in order to protect our NAS and the data that it stores, we will leave both of these settings ticked. iFrame or inline frame is a way that we can embed our DSM into a web page. However, if the web page also contains malicious code, the security of the data on our NAS could be at risk. If we enable do not allow DSM to embed with iFrame, 
we will protect ourselves from this form of attack. However, for anyone who enables this setting, but needs to embed their DSM into a specific web page, we have an option that will allow us to embed our DSM into specific websites via iframe. Clear all saved user login sessions upon system restart will help to prevent system errors on our NAS in the event that a user remains logged in while our system is being restarted. The option, show notification on DSM desktop when the current IP changes, will simply notify a user working in the DSM that their IP address has changed. However, as our users will not be working inside of Distation Manager, we will not enable this option. Under the heading, Trusted Proxy, we can set a proxy server that we trust. A proxy server will act as an intermediary to monitor and manage the data flowing through a network. This means that a proxy server can be used to add security and privacy to our internet traffic. However, due to their complexity, proxy servers don't tend to be employed in most home networks. The next option within security is firewall. However, as we will be looking at this option in more depth in our next video, let's instead look at protection. Under protection, you can see that we have a single option. This option will allow us to enable denial of service protection. A denial of service attack is a situation where the number of requests being made to a server are so overwhelming that the server is unable to process all of the requests. So the aim of a DOS attack is to overload our NAS and prevent our users from accessing their data. As we plan to make our NAS accessible via the internet, the threat of a DOS attack is very real. So by enabling this option, we should minimize the severity of an attack. In order to enable DOS protection, we first need to select the network interface that we've connected our NAS to. As our NAS has been connected to our network, via a network lead linked to one of the network ports on our router, we will select LAN. After ticking Enable DOS Protection, we now need to select Apply. If we now select Account, under the heading Auto Block, we have a number of settings. Let's start by enabling Auto Block. You can see that we're now presented with a set of options that will allow us to block the IP address of anyone who has made a number of failed login attempts within a specific time period. The aim of this feature is to prevent our NAS from being compromised by someone using something called a brute force attack. A brute force attack is simply a trial and error method for attempting to guess a user's login credentials. For now, we will use the default settings for both login attempts and within minutes. However, we will not enable block expiration, as this will simply allow a hacker to continue to use their brute force attack after a certain number of days. If you intend to make your NAS accessible via the internet, enabling auto block is very important. If we switch to a Synology NAS that we've already configured for access via the internet, when we take a look at the option allow block list, and then select block list. You can see that we have a number of IP addresses that have made attempts to perform brute force attacks, but have been blocked by our NAS. The option account protection serves a similar function to auto block, but rather than block specific internet IP addresses, it will block attacks from untrusted or trusted clients on our home network. As a client is simply a computer or device that requests data from our NAS, by enabling this setting, we can protect our user accounts from brute force attacks being conducted by computers on our network. However, as this setting would more typically be used within a business environment and our NAS has been configured for use in a home network, we have decided not to enable this option. Let's once again select Apply to save the changes that we've made in account. Certificate displays any SSL or Secure Sockets Layers certificates that our NAS is using. When we first set up our Synology NAS, a self-signed SSL certificate was automatically generated. While this certificate is perfectly adequate for our current needs, if in the future we decide to make our NAS accessible via the internet, we will need to review this certificate. As we do plan to make our NAS accessible via the internet, 
we will be looking at installing a signed SSL certificate in a future video. Under Advanced, we have two subheadings, HTTP Compression and TLS SSL Profile Level. HTTP Compression is a method to lower the amount of bandwidth being used by our NAS to provide web pages, which in turn might help to increase the speed that web pages on our NAS are rendered within a web browser. While SSL has been deprecated and replaced by TSL or Transport Layer Security, because everyone is still familiar with the term SSL, SSL has remained the default name when referring to NAS encryption. The settings within TSL SSL profile level will allow us to adjust the security settings of our encrypted connections. However, as we're still in the process of configuring our NAS, we will continue to use intermediate compatibility as it will help to minimize issues that might arise as we continue the setup of our NAS. So to recap, in this video we first checked that we had disabled the guest account and then either created a new administrator's account or at very least ensured that the default admin account has a very strong password. We then took a look at the settings within security to see which options had been enabled by default and which settings we should consider enabling as we prepare to make our NAS accessible via the internet. In the next video in this series, we will continue to look at the security options on our NAS by taking a look at enabling its firewall.